gift wedding anniversary. So she can't be with us, but we're joyful that she is where she is and we'll miss her, but we'll get started anyway. I'll do my best to, to live up to her standards. So I'd like to call this meeting to order. And to get us started, I'd like to invite Pastor Brian to give us an opening prayer. Let's pray. Almighty God, you have given your Holy Spirit to the church to lead us in all truth. Bless with the Spirit's grace and presence all who participate in today's annual meeting. Keep us steadfast in faith and united in love, that we may manifest your glory and prepare the way of your kingdom. We are grateful for this place called Trinity, this lighthouse where people who are tossed about in their lives, see of their lives, can find a place a refuge, a place of safety, a place of love. Continue to bless your congregation here. All these things we pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. So as you came in today, you should have picked up, or you should have seen this table and hopefully picked up one of these blue books. This is the annual report for the church. It's a really comprehensive publication that you Includes all of the reports from the different group leaders and, and committee leaders and club leaders. So you can thumb through at your leisure to read up on what's been going on and get a report of all the goings on in 2019. But our first order of business today is to approve the minutes from, 20, from our 2019 last year's annual meeting. And those are found on page two. So if everyone can look at glance at page two, um, have a read of those, but can I get a motion to approve? the 2019 annual minutes. So moved. A second? Second? Does anyone have any additions or subtractions to the minutes from last year? Hearing none, then I'll we'll vote on approving the 2019 annual minutes. Those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, then the 2019 annual meeting minutes are approved. And many, many thanks to our council secretary, Angie Donner, for her great work on recording those and many, many other meetings for the past several years. So the next order of business is to go through the financials. And to that, I'll direct your attention to pages 30 and following. And I'm going to call on John Sweeney, who's our council treasurer, to go through those meetings. He's got a lot of great information, so this is. This is the hard work of being today. Okay, uh, my, uh, the charts that are in the back of the book there, we talked about page 30 and 39. The charts are part of my presentation, so I'm going to show you the version that I don't know if I can like, grab the cards, and I'll get you get to some numbers. Uh, this will give you kind of a presentation of where we spend our resources. The first chart is sort of a nice progression in terms of the uh, uh, congregation giving to the general fund. And uh, you can see it's gone up nicely. I think it's got about, about 5% over, over that time frame. But interestingly, if you look at 2020, we've seen a lift in the number of members that have actually, actually pledged. So that, that's a, a positive note. But the one thing I do want to mention, for those members that are very active, very grateful, and choose not to pledge, their gifts to the church. So you'll hear this great day about 2019 and 2020. We've been very blessed with uh, the uh, faithful stewardship of our congregation. Okay, where do your gifts go? Well, we spent about 27% of our <laughs> We spent about 20% of our resources for outreach, local outreach. Yeah, he just has to hold it closer. We in the 2020 plan in that regard right there. Then we spend uh, about 34% of our resources supporting the children, youth, and adult uh, ministries. And worship joyfully, worship and music program is 22%, a significant event this past year, of course, has been the contemporary service and the music led by, by Kim and her group. Then we spend about 17% on hospitality. And this just breaks down in the search near and far. So it's about 13% for global missions, 17% for the larger ELCA Synod, and 70% for local support. Uh, and then in terms of growth, the, you'll see the breakdown of the growth of faith. 30% for adult education, for example, shift, women 
women's ministry. And then we have youth ministry and the children and family. Okay, let me uh, go through a few slides. I'll hand seven of them, bullet points. So uh, the details, obviously, uh, in the report. So let's, if you want to look at any, any detail, look at page 30 at this point. So uh, this year, congregational giving is actually up 2.2%, or just under 27,000 above budget. That, that is great. Our total receipts were 3.5% above budget. And what else, what's in there is interest income and um, some um, giving that we get from uh, donated funds. Uh, expenses were up 2.1%, uh, just about 28,000 above budget. But noteworthy, uh, is that second is the first bullet there. That includes a $40,000 transfer that the Finance Committee recommended, or made a decision at the end of the year to transfer $40,000 from the general fund to what we call the Capital Asset Major Repair Fund. And this is a 45,000 square foot facility, kind of like the old house. There's new parts and old parts, and things break down. I think we had four major expenses in 2019, so it was really great that through the faithful uh, giving of the church, we were able to move $40,000 and replenish that fund. Excluding that $40,000, we are actually under budget for the year by $12,177, and 96% of that is staff related. Not that we wanted that safe, but we had some turnover of staff this year. Jenny left, and entire left, so it took a while before uh, Tyler's position was Place. So we have some open positions. We ended the year with uh, just under $7,900 surplus. And last year at this meeting, uh, we actually approved a $10,000 def $10, deficit budget. So that was a significant uh, positive change for us. And just quickly, a couple other things. Uh, let's see. It's got out of order. I'm sorry. Now I'm just Well, I'm missing one slide that I was going to tell you about. I can probably do it from memory. Um, we paid down our mortgage uh, to about $400,000. And uh, we have about um, $1.5 million, seems like a very big number, which it is, in cash balances. Most of that is restricted. It's donor designated or it's other funds, memorial funds, and so on. In our general fund, we have, I think, about $400,000 at the end of 2019, and uh, about 190,000 of that was uh, pledges that members have given in December for 2020. So when you wash all that through, we ended up with about $200,000 in our general operating fund. But the balance sheet is very strong. Uh, we only have $400,000 uh, in, in our current mortgage and you know, property value approximately $8 million on the current balance sheet. So let me see if there's any questions about 2019. It was a very good year, and really on the strength of just very faithful, consistent uh, congregation support. Any questions? Okay, I'd like to have somebody, uh, I'll make a motion to approve the 2019 financial report. Pardon? Okay, Andrew, we have a second? Second. Roger, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing that? Period. Okay, let me talk quickly about 2020. Um, we're looking at a budget of uh, about a million four, 421, 422, up 5% over uh, 2019 actual. Congregation giving, which is pledged and unpledged, is up 3.6%. Pledged giving represents about a, just about a million 24,000 and accounts for 80% of the, of the overall giving and 42% of our members have pledged, and that's up a little bit, a couple percentage points from, from last year. So we had a very successful fall campaign, and, and more people are actually pledging, which really makes our life easier on the finance committee. Uh, and then the average pledge uh, is gone up 6.8%, which is just wonderful. 
kind of key budget assumptions. No changing, no change in full staffing levels except for some uh, modest change in part-time staffing. Uh, we have the finance committee approved and recommended to the council, which they approved and were recommending to you. Um, increases, uh, we have a 3% increase in the compensation pool, but individual raises race, will be uh, based on performance. Uh, we, we were seeing a 5% increase in employee benefit expenses, primarily medical, and 0.6, not 6%, 0.6% increase in core non-staff uh, ministry expenses. So your lay staff really does a wonderful job using their resources in, in operating all these programs, children and middle school and youth, adult ministry and so on. The big positive news is because of the good response that we've got from the congregation in terms of the budget for next year, we were able to actually increase um, our Trinity outreach programs by 21%. And that's three components. Synod support, which we actually raised this year, it's been flat for a number of years, and uh, global and local. So that is, is really exciting that we were actually able to increase that by 21%. That is uh, separate from the big program that we'll have this year, Feed My Starving Children. That's over and above the support to the general fund. Just within the general fund, we were able to increase that by 21%. So that's pretty exciting. Okay, the total budget, if you look on, I think it's page 35, you'll see it's break even. So the expenses equal the uh, expected um, receipts during, for, for 2020. And that includes that 21% increase in outreach. And we're also able to in, uh, make an allocation to increase our capital asset major repair fund for maintaining this, this facility by 19,000. <clears throat> so the positive response to this year's annual giving program has allowed us to meet inflationary expense increases and devote, as I indicated earlier, more resources to global and local outreach. So uh, this, this budget, which was approved, vetted, and then approved by the Finance Committee and then recommended to the Council, which they approved, now we're asking you to approve this budget for 2020. But before I, I uh, talk about that resolution, can I see if there's any questions about the 2020 budget? Uh, there's been a lot of work done in the narthex, but we're not done yet. 
this prioritization that we did last month of these funds, we've allocated money to allow us to finish the lighting in the narthex, which I think congregation is really going to notice once it's done, because I've seen the design work on that. So we've got the money here for that. Okay, any other questions? Look at page one. Yeah, it's not doing right here. If you look at page one of the, I get to it here. Okay, at page one, you'll see a resolution. Um, so the resolution is resolved that the Trinity Lutheran Congregation approved the 2020 General Fund budget as presented in the end of the report, which I just covered, and authorized the Church Council to approve additional expenditures as needed during 2020 and months not to exceed the prior year's surplus funds and utilize funds from the Congregational Vision Appeal, which is this right here, for Council-approved initiatives identified in the strategic current strategic plan. This is a mouthful. The reason we do this is we've got a pretty dated set of governance documents in the church. And unfortunately, the bylaws require any spending over $10,000 outside the budget, we'd have to come back and have a congregational meeting to vote on it. That's very restrictive. So we're asking this congregation to approve this resolution. But again, I'll, we're going to work within the budget, but if we came into a situation where we needed to do something over and above that, we'd still be limited to the funds that have been available for prior surpluses. And then, of course, spending against uh, the money that we have in the vision campaign. What does that mean now that we I would say we probably have about $100,000. No way would we spend $100,000 without really vetting it with, with the congregation. But if we had a situation come up, you know, five, ten dollars or over $10,000, which fortunately hasn't happened, but we want to be able to provide the council and the finance committee flexibility. No, the, the, the uh, bylaws restrict us to $10,000, so we can do anything under 10, but if it goes over 10, we have to go through a big process, including have a, having a congregational vote. We have no, no intention to be spending way over that $100,000. We really have you know, $180,000 here, which we've prioritized against the strategic initiative. John, I didn't, I didn't see in here the, the uh, amount of money that was uh, spent to redo the narthex. And I guess it's one of those things where we went ahead and we redid the narthex. And my concern was that there were an awful lot of people that didn't like what was done with the narthex. In other words, I would be specific. We spent an awful lot of money to have that woodwork in the narthex created so it was a light color and it was natural which gave us a nice warm feel yet all of a sudden it's being painted and those of us who were around when some of those decisions to put that in there that was very expensive wood and i guess i wouldn't want to see us go ahead and make a major decision like that without a lot of the members of the church having an opportunity to say yay or nay on it. Well, I, I hear what you say, Tom. Um, I think you have to rely on the structure we have in the church with the leadership. Uh, there was a committee formed, one of the five committees uh, that dealt with strategic initiatives. It was vetted with, uh, uh, with the council. There's a lot of work done on it. The work isn't done yet, so I think you, you might want to wait until you get it completely done to get the new lighting. We're not going to get everybody to agree with everything. I think you have to rely on the leadership structure we have in place. Uh, so we spent a couple of meetings at the, at the council uh, talking about the pros and cons of uh, uh, this proposal, which is part of the engagement initiative, as I recall right here. Yeah. So it's not done yet, so it's going to be a lot brighter. But it, it is a change. I, 
understand that. But you know, for every every one of these decisions, you can't call an all congregational meeting and debate. You've got to rely a little bit on, on your leadership to make the right decisions. Okay, uh, can I get a uh, motion to approve this resolution? Second. Second. Okay, second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Very not. Carried. Thank you. Thank you, John. And that's a, what you just watched there and listened to is an awful lot of hard work. So let's give John a round of applause. Thank you. So our next order of business is to do with leadership. And we have some new members of church leadership that will be introduced to you and then some that are departing. So I'll call on Pastor Brian to introduce those folks. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Page number one has got a list of uh, 20 leadership nominees, if you will want to turn your attention to that. Everybody hear me back there? Okay. Uh, so church council, if any of you are present uh, today uh, that are on this uh, nomination uh, slate, uh, if you would stand. Uh, Taylor DeLay, Matthew Yondel, Avery Rowan, Cindy Leesky, Carol Narum, Roger Spirey, who is a second uh, second term to your uh, person for for church council. Are there any other nominations that you would like to present? Thank you. You can sit down. Any other nominations for congregation council? All right then. Hearing none. Moving on to the Trinity Foundation. Trinity Foundation exists to give out scholarships. It's really about growing Christian leaders in the world and has grown quite significantly the last five or six years and is doing, uh, doing great. If you, if you want to give a gift um, that keeps on giving, literally, uh, do consider our Trinity Foundation. Uh, we have two members that are uh, on, on the slate here for three-year term on Trinity Foundation. Ruth Bash, and Karen Van Buren. Any other nominations? Hearing none, the nominating committee you see here, uh, if you'd stand, Sharon Berg, Bob Eastman, Greg Govrick, Joe McPherson, Brad Pankin, and Jerry Paulson. It's a one-year term, very helpful group of people that help uh, fill out the slate for nominations. Any other, nomi any other nominations for the nominating committee? All right, moving on, staff support. Uh, there are uh, two three-year term and one second term three-year term. Cheryl Miller, Craig Swenson, and then Bob Eastman is a second term three-year term for staff support. Yes. Yes, there are two Cheryl Millers at Trinity Lutheran Church. And there's one that's sitting right here. And that's this is not the Cheryl Miller that we're talking about that's here today. <laughs> um, the other Cheryl Miller has actually been leading the interview team for, uh, first of all, for our, inter our interim uh, senior high youth minister, but also will be leading for the permanent uh, senior high youth person. And she's doing a great job, this Cheryl Miller said, so <laughs> thank you. And there are actually two Brian Froggins. One lives in Corcoran and one lives in Hamilton. <laughs> and they are related. Any, any other nominations for staff support? Hearing none? Just a call on the vice president again. So historically, we've elected the entire slate of nominees so could I entertain a motion that we approve the or elect the entire slate of nominees? So moved. A second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? There. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. So now we'll move on to some departing leadership members. I'll have Pastor Brian recognize those folks as well. Yeah, you know we. Uh, I'm so grateful for our, our congregation <laughs> council that. The eight years that I've been here, they have just, the leadership uh, is just incredible here. And so thanks to 
all who have served on that, or will be serving on Congregation Council. Uh, this, uh, these are a few that are, that are leaving Council, and they will be finishing in March, in a March meeting, and then the new Council begins in April. And uh, first of all, Angie Boner. Uh, Angie has been uh, incredible as our secretary for several years, and she literally gets those minutes out right after the meeting. It's rare when it comes the next day, and, and uh, uh, so I really appreciate you, Angie. And Angie also has run uh, such visionary and just a, a great deal of progressiveness to our to our congregation, and that's much appreciated. Thank you for all your service. Eric Johnson uh, is leading our council. Uh, Eric it always brings great insights to where, wherever he's serving, right back there. Uh, he has also been the liaison uh, from council to our staff support. And uh, he was the chairperson of the Trinity Foundation uh, for, for quite a few years as well. And so appreciate all your leadership, Eric. Uh, Dax Atkinson, um, he is, uh, he's talk about a willingness to serve whenever Angie could make a, a meeting to take minutes. Dax was right there to back her up, and uh, took him a couple of days to get the minutes out, but uh, <laughs> actually he was great too, and also very, very insightful, quiet person, but you know, when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen, and that was the same thing with Dax and Atkinson too, and so many thanks, I don't think he's here today, but many thanks to Dax. Uh, Beth Kahlberg, uh, Beth uh, served for a year on our council, and she brought such a fresh vision and fresh eyes to the congregation and because of health reasons she had to step down last year but just uh, did a remarkable job when she was on council. Always a gift to have our youth leaders. Uh, we have three outstanding youth leaders that, are, that have been uh, voted in for this next year uh, and so many thanks to them for agreeing to serve and those are Taylor and Matthew and Avery. Uh, really, uh, we really listen to the youth of this congregation and I'll tell you what, um, we have been blessed with the caliber of youth that we have in our midst. Um, but we're saying goodbye to Nick Burns, Jack Patterson, and Allie Swenson, who served this past year and did a, did a real fine job this last year. So many thanks to all that have served this past year. And that concludes the two order, the primary orders of business. Is there any other business that any of the congregation wants us to consider at this time? give a little uh, background as to where we are with the senior high youth? Uh, so currently we are in an interim phase with uh, a wonderful woman who has uh, eight years of experience with youth ministry. Her name is Megan Moron. She's not able to be with us today because she's got another uh, meeting to attend uh, close uh, right around uh, noon. But she uh, comes to us in an interim uh, uh, way until, and we're going to continue to look for uh, a senior high ministries director. And uh, Megan is also in a process of discerning whether she wants to stay with us as uh, as senior high director. And she's fantastic. So what I want to ask all of you to do is to pray for Megan and her discernment every single day. And especially, also, just to, to pray that uh, these high school kids continue to grow in their faith through the work that she does here. We're very fortunate to have her. Thank you. Any other questions or any other business from the, from the congregation? Oh, this is just not my day. Okay, well with that, I'll ask Brian to listen to the benediction. I invite you to rise and receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And let's close with the Lord's Prayer, the traditional one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Brian. And can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting today? So move, second. All those in favor? Aye. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much for your time.